<coughs> Today is a very auspicious day. Three Vaishnavas, three personal associates of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu disappeared from this world today. I remember before when in 2010 I was in our daily mat and one devotee from Brazil he sent me a message that Chilanaren Gosai Maharaj is uh, they found that cancer, so he wants to go to Govardhan and all this. If I can, inform Gurudev. So I did, and Gurudev said, this is this world. No one can stay in this world. This is the nature of this world. Even our Guru Vargas, they disappear. They come and go. They are teaching us. Now, this is stopped here. In another occasion, Gurudev told us that they are teaching us that no one can stay in this world, so we have to be prepared for striving for our eternal welfare. Here in this world, everything is temporary. No one can change this. And Srila Bhakti Thakur, he told, Jibono anitio jana hosar, tahe nana bido bipodo bhar, namashraya kori jatane tumi tako ho apono kaje. We are singing Udilo Aruna Purabhage. There, this line is there. You should know what is the essence of this life. That, that it is anitya, it is temporary. Everything in this world has expiry uh, time. It will degrade and it will expire. Everything. Today also my Brahmin thread, I noticed that it got torn, so I will have to change. Everything in this world is like this. No one can stop this. But this is not the problem, because the only thing is we have to use these things for getting our eternal welfare. We have to engage in the service of Krishna, then we can get our eternal welfare. Once in Russia or Ukraine or Belarus, I was hearing Gurudev's Harikata. Gurudev was explaining in Satya Yuga was like this, and they did this Yuga Dharma and like this. Then in Kali Yuga, we are diseased, so we are unable to do Diti worship. So Harinam is prescribed. Then some time lecture went on. Then one devotee from the audience, he said that he's having some health, much health problems. So how he should worship? Then Guru said, just now I said, you do Harinam. Harinam everyone can do. And by Harinam, one will get eternal welfare. Vyasadev told in Bhagavatam, the, this Kali Yuga is ocean of faults. Ocean means very big, means unlimited faults are there in this Kali Yuga. But there is one Mahan Guna that is one great thing about this Kali Yuga that by Kirtan, Nama Sankirtan, one can get Brahma Brajet. Ultimate goal, eternal welfare, one can get. We got this human birth for one purpose. It is temporary, but we got it for one purpose to go back home, back to Godhead. That is the point. So, in all circumstances, we have to, Bhakti Thakur sang in this song. Jibono anityo janahosar. You should know this life is temporary. And everything is in this world is temporary. Everything is breaking. Jibono anito janahosar tahe nana bipodo bhar. And so all many varieties of problems all the time. You will see one problem. The next one will start 
another one or two together, three together, like this all the time. This is the this material existence. Tahe nana bi bido bipodobhar. So many varieties. These that so. Nama shraya kori jatane tumi tako ho apuno kaje. So this is the circumstance. No one can change this. So what do we have to do? Nam ashray kori. We have to take shelter of the name. Name is non different from named Krishna. We have to take shelter and we have to do our relative duty. What is there? If we are in the mat, if you are in kitchen, you will do that. If you are in pujari, you will do that. If you are uh, any kind of service, you do your relative duties and always take shelter of Harina. This is what we have to do. Other things we cannot change. And we should not be bewildered by them. Prabhupada, in his last message, he told all, so, so many problems all the time. But we should not think that our life is meant only for removing the problems. Or that we should be bewildered by the problems. No, we should always think about our eternal welfare. That is so. Here, Gurudev also explained, Namashraya, we have to take shelter because it is important, this word is important because you know, Draupadi was calling Krishna but not taking his shelter at first. At first she thought, these kings will help me, then uh, the Arjuna and the others, they will help Bhishma. So she was calling Krishna but not taking his shelter. So Krishna did not come. And then she took shelter of herself. She thought, I will rescue myself. Then with one hand she lifted. Nothing happened. Then when she with two hands and took absolute shelter to Krishna, surrendering, then immediately Krishna came. Immediately and rescued her. So we have to chant with taking shelter of Krishna and do our relative duties. That is our business. Then Bojite Bojite Samay Asile Ede Chariya Dibo. We are singing that song. Uh, that song. Bimala Vaishnava Roti Upojive. Nadik Ne. Bimala Roti Upojive. Kobe Hena said, When will that day come? When I will get attachment to pure Vaishnav. Bimala Vaishnava Roti Upojive. One line is there. In that song, our Parangurev used to uh, say one line there. Bojite bojite somoy asile ede ho charya divo. In Bengali. said, I will worship Krishna. I will worship Krishna and then time will come. Time will come when I will give up this body. When I will have to give up this body. The main point is we have to do bhajan. And Harinam can be done in all circumstances. So we should keep focus on this. We got this human birth. It is temporary, but we can get eternal welfare by chanting with taking shelter. Then we will realize our eternal identity. This is not our real identity, this body. We are misidentifying with this. Our real identity, we are related to Krishna as his eternal servant. That is eternal, cannot be killed. Heaven has no disease, nothing. So the Vaishnavas are also teaching us. This is like this world. They also disappear. Of course, they are not by karma. They are doing some pastime of illness or something. But that is not by karma. They are not forced. By the will of Krishna, they come. By the will of Krishna, they go or their own will, they uh, they go subordinate to the desire of Krishna service. So they appear and they go, but they teach us. So we should not be so much bewildered by this because this is the fact. We cannot change this. Everything is temporary, but if we utilize everything, engage everything accordingly, to circumstance for the service of Krishna, then we will get eternal welfare. So that is positive. That is why Srila Maharaj told, only Vaishnavas 
who are following this verse, that they no kampam su samik shamanam. Vunjana evatma kritam vipakam, hrit vak vapur bir vidadam namaste jiveta jamukti sadayaba. They are seeing mercy of Krishna in all circumstances. They, only Vaishnavas, having that vision, they are always optimistic. They are seeing mercy of Krishna. He is all good. He is working for our eternal welfare all the time. So they are never pessimistic. You will find in many Harikatas of Shidra Maharaj. Vaishnavas are always optimistic because they are having contact with all good Supreme Lord. They are seeing it, whatever is happening it is, it is for the best of all. But we are not realizing due to our impure vision. We are not seeing reality as it is. So Vaishnavas, they come to this world and they disappear from this world out of compassion. When Srila Bhakti Pramod Puri Gosai Maharaj disappeared in 1999, we were doing Brajamandal Parikrama with Gurudev. Then on today's day, we came to know. And uh, then in that, uh, we went to one place, one temple. There in Harikata, Gurudev told whatever pure devotee does, is for the eternal benefit of all that we have to understand. So today is the disappearance of Bhukarva Goswami. Our Gurudev wrote his biography. Bhugarbha Gosami was Lokanat, Gosami's closest friend and constant companion. <clears throat> he was Prema Manjari in Krishna Lila. Lokanat Gosami is Lila Manjari and he was direct disciple of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and he was the first to be ordered by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to go to Brindavan before he took sannyas. Mahaprabhu already told him. He said, later on I will take sannyas and I will also come to Brindavan. So you go there. So Lokanath Goswami was in separation grief, but his uncle, uncle is Bugarba Goswami, he pacified him and he said, I will go with you to Brindavan. He's Prema Manjari in Krishna Lila and he is a disciple of Gadadhar Pandit, Radharani. Gosaminam cha bugarbam, bugarbhotam suvishrutam, sada mahashayam bande, Krishna prema pradam prabhu. Shila gubinda devasya seva sukha vilasinam doyalum, premadam svacham nityam ananda bigraham. I offer my reverence to the illustrious bugarbha prabhu, who was said to be born from the bowels of the earth. That is his name, Bhu Garba. Bhu means Bhumi, land. Garba means womb. He appeared from land, like Sita Devi. He bestows love of Krishna. He takes pleasure in the service of Govinda Dev. is compassionate, simple and always joyful. Bhu Garba Gosami and Bhagavad Das are branches of Gadadhar Pandit. Both of them went to live in Brindavan. So, when Bugarba Gosami saw how unhappy Lokanath Gosami was because he 
taught about Mahaprabhu Sanyas Lila and his order to go to Vrindavan, Bhugarbha Goswami, he decided to accompany him to Vrindavan. The two companions walked through Rajmahal, Tajpur, Purnia, Ayodhya, Lakhno and many holy places before finally arriving in Braj. So they were always there together doing intense bhajan. Lokanand Goswami's affection for Bhugarbha Goswami was well known everywhere. They only had different bodies. In spirit, they were one. Gopal Bhatta Goswami was extremely compassionate. Bhugarbha Goswami and Lokanand Goswami are a gold mine of virtues. This is all from Bhakti Ratnakar. And because here two biographies are there together with Lokanath and Bugarva. I'm trying to find that. Yes, I think this is. Here. So, Bugarbha Goswami Samadhi, you will find when in Radha Damodar temple, when you do Parikrama, when you go around, there are little up and then down, and then you enter that courtyard where Rupa Goswami Samadhi and Bhajan Kutir, there on the uh, further there, you will find Bugarbha Goswami Samadhi. So, remembering his Samadhi, I'm going down to him and praying his causeless mercy. Today is also the disappearance of Kashi Sharpandi. Pura Brindavane Cheto, Stito Bringara Banguru, Shri Kashishwar Gobindo, To Jato Prabhu Sevako, from Gaur Ganadesh Deepika, Shila Kashishwar Pandit, or also called Brahmachari or Gosami, was Krishna's, ser was Krishna's servant Bringara or the Saki Shashireka. Here in this verse, it is for two. One was Bringara, another was Bhangu Bangur. They are two sevaks of Krishna in Krishna Lila. One became Kashishwar, another was Govinda. Both became sevaks of Mahaprabhu in this Lila also. So he appeared in district Hugli and uh, Yes, Kashishwar Pandit was especially known for his physical strength. Kashishwar Pandit was a disciple of Ishwar Puibhat, Mahaprabhu's guru. So both Govinda and Kashishwar, they were sevaks of Ishwar Puribhat. And before he disappeared, he ordered them, after my disappearance, you should go to Puri and engage yourself in the service of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So after Ishwar Puri disappeared, then Govinda immediately left for Puri and he surrendered himself to Mahaprabhu. Kashishwar, he visited some holy places in India. Then after that, he also came to Puri and offered. So when Govinda was there, he told, I am disciple of Ishwar Puri Pat. He ordered that I should engage that we should engage in your service. Kashishwar will come a little later. Then Mahaprabhu played the pastime of being puzzled. He did not know what to do. So what we, when we don't know, you will find in Bhagavatam, whenever there is any dilemma, then they are showing this by their example, you have to take shelter of Supreme Lord or Guru 
then a solution will be there. With our own brain, we cannot get by intellect like this. Because always difficult dilemmas are coming. So Mahaprabhu here played the pastime to ask Saram Bhattacharya. Because now already he became a devotee, he was very learned in all Shastra. All Shastra he knows. So Mahaprabhu came to him and he asked that they are my god brothers. They are servants of my Gurudev. They were engaged in direct seva of him. They are my object of worship. How I can take service from them? But at the same time, it is Guru who ordered them. So what, what I should do? Then Sarvam but the charge of immunity, yes, it is there in Shastra. He gave two verses. Sa shushruvan matari bhargavena pitur niyogat prahritam dvishadvat pratya grahit agraja shasanam tat agya gurunam hi avi charania. This is from Ragu Vangsha, I think in uh, Ram, Ramayana. Meaning is, on the order of his father, Parashuram killed his own mother, Renuka, as though she were an enemy. When he heard this, Lakshman accepted the order of his elder brother Ram, for the orders of a guru are not to be debated or think about it, considered. No, you only have to follow. You know, Jamadagni is the father of Parashuram. His wife went to a river to take water for his worship, but there she was looking at some men and it became late. So Jamadagni understood by meditation that this mistake she did. So he killed, uh, he ordered his sons, first one and like this, to kill mother. They all said, how we can kill mother? That is not good. But Parashuram, he knew it is the order of father or guru, their guru, and that should not be considered if bona fide guru, of course, bona fide guru, is always connected with Krishna. He will not give any order which is not for the service of Krishna. So that we have to follow without thinking. So he killed his mother. He knew. It is for the eternal welfare of all. So Jamadagni then was pleased. Yes, and he said, you kill your brothers also, because they, they did not follow my order. So he killed mother and brothers immediately. So what kind of religion is this? One, one can ask. What is this religion? So. Then Jamadagni was very pleased with him and he said, I'm giving you boons, so what do you want? Then he said, you are very powerful, you make my mother alive again and my brothers. And he did, he revived them and they could not remember, they just woke up. So Guru, what Guru orders, there will be no harm to anyone and it will be for the eternal welfare. So that is why we should not think because we cannot immediately understand also everything. What Guru says, if we are not realized source, you cannot understand. That is beyond our uh, capacity to know, but we have to follow in faith. Then we will, re we will realize what was the point there. So this example was there. So Lakshman, immediately follow the order of Ramchandra. So here, Agya Guru Namhi Avicharanya. You should not vichar, you should not consider or think, no. Another one he gave from Ramayana. Nirvicharam Guru Agya Maya Karja Mahatmana Shreya Hyevam Bhavatyash Chamama Chaiva Vishesha Taha. I must follow the order of my Guru because he is a great soul. You will certainly benefit from this, but even more so will I. 
So then, Sarvambhata Charjo explained to Mahaprabhu, it is in Shastra, Shastra is final, it is word of Supreme Lord, that Guru's order is most prominent of all instructions. So that has to be followed. Then Mahaprabhu accepted, because it is the order of Guru, he accepted them as his servants. So when Mahaprabhu used to visit Jagannath temple to take darshan, there are many crowds all the time, and Mahaprabhu is, was also very famous. And uh, so Kashishwar Pandit, because he was very strong, Physically, he used to check the crowds so that not everyone will touch Mahaprabhu and disturb and all this. So this was his seva. Gobinda was cooking and cleaning and all this. So two sevaks Mahaprabhu had. And uh, when Rata Yatra, there were also much crowd. So Mahaprabhu was dancing. So there was first one ring of devotees made by Nitananda Prabhu. They were holding hands to protect Mahaprabhu that his dancing service of Jagannath will not be disturbed. The second ring was made by Kashishwar and other devotees, but he was in charge of the second ring. And the third ring was made by King Prataparudra and his soldiers and ministers. So that Mahaprabhu's dance for Jagannath was not disturbed by any crowd. And when there, there was that uh, Mahaprasad after Atayatra and after Gundicha Marjan like this, Kashishwar used to distribute Prasad also there. And he was also in some in Navadip pastimes with Mahaprabhu in Kirtans in Srivas Angan, bathing in Ganges, going to Sridhar Pandit's house, all those uh, pastimes. So in Chaitanya Bhagavat, Brindavanda Stakur tells just how dear Kashishwar Pandit was to the Lord, calling Mahaprabhu Kashishwar's heart on one occasion. And the wealth of Kashishwar's life, Kashishwar Pranadhan on another. So two times he mentioned him, Mahaprabhu's name in relation to Kashishwar. Kashishwar's Pranadhan and Hridoy, heart. Kashishwar Pandit was also present when Mahaprabhu went to greet Advaita Charjo and the other devotees on their arrival from Bengal. His disappearance day is on the 14th day of the vexing moon, Shukla Chaturdashi, means today, in the month of Kartik, if you follow Kartik up to Purnima. Otherwise, it comes into Agrahayan month. According to another opinion, it is the full moon day of the month of Ashwin, when Radha and Krishna's Rasa Purnima is also celebrated. But we are following today <coughs> this Kartik. So he's personal sevak of Chaitanya Mahapur and his god brother, disciple of Ishar Puri. In Krishna Lila, <coughs> in Dasya Rasa, servant. So I am bowing down to Shilakashi Sharpandit and praying for his causeless mercy. Also today is the disappearance day of Shila Bhakti Pramod Puri Gosai Maharaj. We were hearing about him before Kartik. His appearance day is that time. So he came in contact with Bhakti Ratna Thakur who was God brother of Bhakti Vinod Thakur and his Shiksha disciple. Bhakti Ratna Thakur is initiated Diksha by Bipin Bihari Gosam. That is also Diksha Guru of Bhakti Vinod Thakur. 
of course, Bhaktivinoda Thakur is personal associate of Supreme Lord. <clears throat> he's Kamala Manjari. But he's playing the pastime of appearing in this world and doing pastime. So he also accepted Diksha Guru. But his Diksha Guru was not fully uh, pure in all the practices. So, but still, Bhaktivinoda Thakur would respect him uh, in the same way as Prahlad Maharaj respected the his guru, Sanda and Tamarka. He would never disturb or what they, they uh, thought. He was replying back and all this. So giving that kind of respect, but not accepting all the teachings from them uh, and, or consider they are good. So like that, Bhaktivinu Thakur also outwardly he was accepting, but not everything. That is why we in our Guru Parampara, we give importance on Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj, who is a pure devotee. He uh, was supporting Bhaktivinu Thakur in every matter and Bhaktivinu Thakur was also fully surrendered to Jagannath Das Babaji in regard to birthplace of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in Mayapur. Jagannath Das Bhavarino Siddha, he revealed that is the, pl the place. So in this way, so this Bhakti Ratna Thakur was a disciple of Bipin Bihari Goswami, but he also took Shiksha, he took Bhakti Ratna Thakur as his Shiksha Guru. So through this Bhakti Ratna Thakur, Srila Bhakti Pramod Puri Goswami Maharaj came to know about the writings of Bhaktivinoda Thakur and also about Prabhupada. And then he met Prabhupada. Although from birth, Puri Maharaj was devoted to Supreme Lord and ideal character, there are many his childhood pastimes you can find in his biography, how he would teach in a proper, polite manner his parents about many things, about purity and all this. So after he met Prabhupada, that time he was still studying, but he was hearing Harikata from Prabhupada regularly. Even one time, one scorpion beat him, but he would come on to Harikata anyway. And Prabhupada saw there is something pain. He said, yes, no problem. So, but anyhow, he was very eager to hear Harikata. Then after that, he, was, he came, he went to take treatment. So they are showing by example. Then he joined the mat and was doing all seva and especially he was editor of Dainik Nodia Prakash, daily spiritual magazine and uh, Gauria magazine, weekly magazine from Gauria Mat. And he was very good Kirtania he was the first to sing on the radio. That time radio came out. So Guryamat, sometimes there were some kirtans and harikata were on radio. He was singing and speaking. And he got the, those uh, blessings from Prabhupada, Mahopadesha and other titles. And he said that, that once Prabhupada told him, now you will have to write articles. Before he used to, write what Prabhupada was dictating. But one day Prabhupada said, now you will have to write articles. Then Puri Maharaj was hesitant. No, I cannot. If you say, then I can write, but myself I cannot. No, no, you will do, you will do. Then because it is the order of Guru, he has to be followed, not think. So we just have to accept and follow. So when he was writing, Sri Guru Gauranga Jayata, all glory to Guru and Gaurango, he started. When he wrote Guru, then his pen automatically started writing by the grace of Prabhupada and a whole article, everything was there. If we submit to Guru, he will give that power to serve Krishna. But we have to submit and for that we have to surrender, not to think, no, I cannot do or I'm thinking Yes, I can do. Gurudev said, no, this is not your seva. You can, no, no, I can do. Then we are not surrendered. Then how we will receive grace? 
and proper service. You have to submit to Guru. And by His grace, we can serve Krishna only, not by our own. Either uh, sup, uh, over self confidence or over self uh, like inferiority complex that over uh, this. No, what Guru says that we have to do without thinking. Before, the, it is in Shastra. We heard before two verses. So Puri Gosai Maharaj was following and he got on blessing and he was doing seva. After the disappearance of Prabhupada, he was staying in Bhagavad Gauriya for some time. Then when those that period of different charges were manifest was there, he went to do bhajan in Kalna. That is in Bengal. And there he was doing bhajan in solitary. And that king of that place was so inspired by him, by his saintly qualities, that he offered him that Ananta Vasudev Murti, one deity there, the whole temple he gave to him. So Puri Maharaj engaged in that service. But then later he thought that this Brihat Mridanga to write books and articles and these things is actually the seva given to me by Prabhupada. So he came to our Parangurudev in Calcutta and he said, I want to engage myself in Brihat Mridanga Seva. Brihat Mridanga Seva means, Brihat means big Mridanga. If you do Nagar Sankirtan on the street, then the sound of Mridanga will be heard and it will be beneficial for others. They will hear Harinam and Mridanga that will awake. But Brihad Mridanga was started by Prabhupada to distribute the books and magazines and all this that will have more amplitude. It can reach more people than the sound of Mridanga. That is why Brihad Mridanga. Because at that time, this technology came out to uh, printing presses. Before it was on hand, so it, you cannot write so many books and distribute so many. But printing press, then immediately Vaishnavas, Prabhupada, he utilized that for making so many copies of books, magazines and distributing everywhere. That is Brihat Mridaka. Nowadays also, then later this internet came, even more you can reach people with uh, divine message. Uh, so, but it has to be utilized for the service of Krishna, not for any ulterior purpose. So what Krishna gives, that we have to utilize for his service. Bhakti Thakur also in Krishna Sanhita, I got it today, one devotee brought to me from Vrindavan. I requested him. So there Bhakti Thakur wrote, that we are not against uh, material development in science all this. We are not. Because what they will invent, what they will, that we will use for the service of Krishna, what is the problem? So we are not trying to forcefully stop the science, but we will utilize that for the service of Krishna. So when internet came, then they, it was utilized, the flight, everything. They, Vaishnavas, they are only utilizing and everything has expiry date, so what to do? We should not be bewildered by this. Only we have to think about our duty. Krishna said to Arjun, you don't think about other things. Your duty, you only think about your duty. You do your duty, that will be beneficial for you and for others. So, the duty will be shown to us and given by Gurudev. So, Srila Bhakti Pramod Puri Gosai Maharaj came and our Parangurdev was very happy. Yes, I will make you in charge of our publication department of our mat. That time already Chaitanya Vani magazine monthly was published from our mat and SN Ghosh, we observed his disappearance, and he was chief editor. 
from beginning. Then when Puri Gosai Maharaj came, he became head and for all the books, for all the articles, magazines and everything, he was in charge. Our Gurudev said I was under him, serving under him. And whenever any difficulty came, I took his advice. And he was traveling to all preaching programs with our Parangurudev and also Parikramas. And he would install deities for our mats. And doing all seva uh, in our mat, he was staying for 30 years. And his Bhajan Kutir is in Calcutta mat, you know, above f of Parangurdev's room. Intentionally, Parangurdev said, you are my senior god brother, so it is proper that you should stay on my head, up. I will get dust from your lotus feet. So he made his room just above his own room. That the room is still there. So Puri Gosai Maharaj is not an ordinary person. And uh, you know, our Gurudev, he was pressed by some disciples to go outside India to rescue the fallen souls. Of course, that is correct. But Gurudev played the pastime of how I can rescue others. I myself did not rescue myself. How I can rescue others? That is vanity only. And what I will, I am not interested in any sightseeing and all these things. They were pressing. Then he said, okay, my Gurudev disappeared. So I will consult, I will take advice or order from my Shiksha Guru, he is still here. And Gurudev said, I was thinking he will say no, because he was following all the Brahminical purity, uh, these things. So Western countries, there is no purity. So surely he will say, no, don't go there. They are not washing their hands. They are not uh, this. So, <laughs> so, uh, and eating and all this, you know. So, but Puri Gosai Maharaj said, no, you have to go. Because it is the order of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Bhakti Thakur and Prabhupada, you have to go. This message of divine love is for all jivas of the whole world. You have to inform them that you can get Krishna Prem by chanting Harinam. You have to inform them to all. That is your duty. They will accept or not, you should not think about that. It is your duty to inform, to inspire them, and there are some who will accept. So why you want to deprive them? So then our Gurudev, he decided, and he said to Puri Gosai Maharaj, you will take my responsibility there is so much opulence and all this. If I will have spiritual fall, then who will rescue me? Uh, will you take my responsibility? Then Puri Gosai Maharaj said, your Gurudev will take your responsibility. You go. Don't think. Don't worry. You go. So then Gurudev said, I went. And wherever, wherever I went, I was surrounded by devotees due to his grace. So I I could not think other things and also I, I was not able to see other things. I was rescued. I was protected by, always I was surrounded by devotees, so I had no difficulty. By the grace of Srila Bhakti Pramod Puri Gosai Maharaj. So, you know, in uh, 1999, that last Vyasa Puja, Last time also we heard about how Puri Gosai Maharaj was always in contact with the Diti. Gadadhar Pandit told him that Pujari, uh, this and Govardhan, all those pastimes. So today's time is almost over. So in 1999, last Vyasa Puja, of Bhakti Puri Gosai Maharaj, I went there and I bought that book. It was published for that occasion, The Art of Sadhana. Translation from Bengali articles of Bhakti Pramod Puri Maharaj. 
Gurudev said he was doing everything with full faith and with sincerity and everything in detail and also following fasting whenever installation of deities or any function he would fast not drink and Brajamandal Parikrama walking we requested him to take car and he said no I will walk so in this way he was very sincere and very uh, and during Ratha Yatra he would chant whole Chaitanya Charitamrita that chapter till Gundicha and one man he wanted to steal money from Puri Maharaj when he was singing for Jagannath and one another Brahmachari said oh thief thief Puri Maharaj thief is stealing your money be careful be careful catch him but Puri Maharaj became disturbed with this Brahmachari why you are bothering about this money this is not important money important is the service of Bhagavan now I'm singing for him and there is some transcendental emotion is coming if I lose this this will be the problem if I lose money there is no problem but this I should not lose so that is their vision they are not conditioned souls they know what is the necessity so that book I got and I brought to Gurudev in our mat afterwards I said Gurudev you please write some blessing for me in this book then Gurudev pointing to the photo of Puri Gosai Maharaj on the front cover he will bless you I still remember he said he will bless you means in the in the mood how I can bless you he's my guru he will bless you Shiksha Guru so in order to receive that blessing I want to read every time I, I try to read something from this book so I will just open somewhere and Guru said yes you make a cover so that that his photo in front there should not be any apparat or something um, there so you cover so I will just open so that we can hear some teaching from Shilapuri Gosai Maharaj Hmm. Bhaktivino Thakur's song which was quoted before Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Jive Doyakari is based on a verse from Vaishnava Tantra which Jiva Gosami quotes in his Bhakti Sandharva. The six elements of taking shelter are described there as follows Anukulyasya Sankalpa Pratikulyasya Varjanam Rakshi Shyatiti Vishwasho Goptrite Baranam Tatha Atmanikshepa Karpanya Saravida Sharanagati Accepting that which is favorable, rejecting the unfavorable to devotion to Krishna, believing that Krishna will save me, accepting Krishna as one's maintainer, self-surrender and humility are the six types of Sharanagati whenever I hear this in Sanskrit this verse I always remember Srila Bhakti by Gopuri Gosai Maharaj he used to explain this and once he also told me that you should work but with this kind of mood that Krishna is the only protector and Krishna is the only maintainer because he is the one who gives us strength to work without that we cannot independ so we have to be aware of that fact we should not have false ego I am the doer and it is Krishna who is giving the fruit and everything so we have to do our duty but actually Krishna is maintainer and protector then that will be spiritual otherwise it will be karma from false ego and you will be in tension and all these things but when you accept Krishna as maintainer you are aware and doing your duty then that will be spiritual that we have to or if we if we get 
something from someone, we should know it is Krishna who is giving. That is only instrumental. But Krishna is giving. Or if we give to someone some help or something, we should not have false ego. I am maintaining that person. That is also false ego. So further, here, Srila Bhakti Pramod Purivasa Maharaj say, Srila Bhakti Thakur has elaborated on these processes in his Amrita Prabhaha Basya. That is for Chaitanya Charita Amrita. Accepting that which is favorable means that which is favorable for developing one's devotion to Krishna. Rejecting the unfavorable means one must vow I renounce any activity which does not lead to Krishna. Be three, believing that Krishna will save me means believing that Krishna alone is my savior. In other words, one should think I do not believe knowledge of Brahman will save me from death, but Krishna will definitely be merciful and deliver me. For accepting Krishna as one's maintainer means one thinks, I do not believe that the deities presiding over the different sacrifices or religious performances deliver the results of these acts, nor do they maintain me. It is rather Krishna alone who takes care of me and not any other man or God, demigod, or myself. With a real ego being surrendered to Krishna, we have to do our duty. Then five, self-surrender means to think, my wishes are not independent. I am completely subordinate to the will of Krishna. What he wants, that I will do. Six, humility means to think oneself as very lowly. The Supreme Lord loves those devotees who have taken shelter of him. He listens to their prayers and awards them the gift of Raja Prem. So today, by the grace of Srila Bhakti Pramod Puri Gosain Maharaj, we got to know about Sharanagati. Supreme Lord Six for Charanagati. Our Gurudev said, once he asked me in Chandigarmat, what is Six for Charanagati? Then I said, this Six. Then Gurudev smiled, yes, very good. Then in Harikata, then Gurudev said, when speaking Gajendra Moksha, then he said, we may memorize this Six Charanagati, we can Memorize, you can say accepting favor, all this. You can remember that is okay. But the spirit should be there. Means actually we have to be surrendered. And that we have to practice under the guidance of one who is surrendered. He will tell us what we should reject, what we should accept, how we should think, and what we should, all this we have to learn. Then when we practice and when we become surrendered, then devotion will actually start. Before surrender, no devotion can be done. First is surrender, that is foundation. Then we will do for the satisfaction of Krishna, otherwise we will do for some other purpose. So then when we will serve, being surrendered, then Krishna will Award us the gift of Praja Prem. So I am remembering Srila Bhakti Pramod Puri Gosai Maharaja's Samadhi in Mayapur and also his Bhajan Kutir is there. I used to go on this day to that mat and hear his glories and also take Prasad there and meet his disciple Srila Bodhayan Maharaj and others, and see his object of worship, Guru Gauranga, Radha Gopinath, and one side is Gaur Gadadhar, 
another side Valudev Subhadra Jagannath and also on Rishingadev and later also they installed Prabhupada already there. So I am remembering Srila Bhakti Pramod Puri Goswami Maharaj. His glories are unlimited. I am bowing down to him and praying his causeless mercy. Tomorrow is also a very auspicious day. We will hear about that tomorrow.